Some of you had requested me to create a video on how to do post method using JSON in a Spring Boot application which uses Spring MPC. I'm going to create a small project and I'm going to show you how to do post mapping using Spring MPC in a Spring Boot application. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primers. I am right now in the traditional website where we do create our Spring Boot application, the start.spring.io. Let's create a package from here. I am just naming the project as com tech primers spring boot or spring mvc post example. We need to add the dependencies. I am going to use the spring mvc so I am just saying spring web. Also we need the jpa to persist the data into the database and I am going to use h2 as a database in this project. If you are using mysql you can use the mysql jdbc driver here. So let's go ahead and create this project. Let me unzip and open it in IntelliJ. Let me maximize this window. Let's go to the pom.xml and then witness the dependencies which are there in the project. So the dependencies which we added were the JPA and the web along with the H2. All these are present. That's it. We are good. The project also has got loaded. I'm just going to create different resources, services and model packages. Let me do that quickly. So service will be one package, model will be another, resource will be one, and we need the repository. So let's start off with the resource. I'll just go to resource and create a Java class called user resource. Uh, this is the typical example which we have been using in all our videos. I'm going to use the same. Let's mark this as REST controller. Let's do the request mapping. This is to enable the REST endpoint for this particular resource. We have added the controller. Now we need to add the post mapping which we wanted to create. Let's do the post mapping and we need to create a JSON, isn't it? So we need to say producers media type dot json value and we need to consume json as well because we are going to create a json and post it to this particular rest endpoint so we need to produce the json as well and consume as well so we have created a producer and consumer which is going to be json and let's return some list of users for this create operation and when we create it how do we store this json message into a variable we can use the request body annotation this will convert the message which is in the request body into a json value i'm going to use the user model we haven't created that model we will be creating that in a while meanwhile let me return null here now we can go ahead and create this user model. We have the model package created, so I'm going to create it under that. This is going to be used by the JPA. So let's mark it as entity. We'll mark it as table so that this is recognized as table by having it, which is inside JPA. The fields which we will be having are the ID. Let's have a name and let's also have a department and finally let's do some salary. Since we need a primary key, I'm just going to mark the long ID as primary key and I want to generate this value automatically. I don't want to generate that. So I'm going to say the generation strategy as auto so that this gets generated automatically. I haven't added Lombok, so I cannot uh, do annotation processing. So I'm just going to use the getters and setters creation from the IntelliJ. And I need a non empty constructor for the JPA. Now, user got imported. We need this as a list. We need to create a user service. 
isn't it? So let's create a user service. I'll just create this under the service package which we have already created. Since this is a service, we are going to annotate it with service. And let's have uh, two methods one for uh, getting the list of users. Get all users. I'll just say get all because it's a user service. I can just say get all because it's a user. For now, I'll just return null. And let's create one more called create. And I'll pass the user here. Here, let's not do anything here. Now we need to plug the user repository onto the user service. So let's auto wire the user repository. We haven't created the user repository, the JPA repository. Let's create that as well. We have the repository package created before. So let's use that. This is going to be an interface because we are going to extend it with the extend it from the JPA repository. The user is the model and the id is long that's it so we have the user repository ready and we are going to create here using the user repository we will just do a save to do a create so this will insert the user into the tables we need to retrieve that back you just say user repository dot find all this is going to retrieve us back so the service is ready now let's go to the user resource And we need to create it, create the user here, and we need to give the list of users which are there currently in the database. So let's do the user service dot create for the user, and finally we'll return the user service dot get all. Also, we can add one more uh, rest endpoint called get mapping, and we'll return the list of users. So let's uh, format this class. So we have created the user and we have uh, done a get all done. Let's go to the service and just double check if it's all good. We have the repository and we have it. Uh, we have the methods called create and get all, which are going to create and then retrieve all the information. Yep, fine. And we also have the repository. Let's go to the repository. The repository is extending JPA and we are good here. Let's go to the user model. We have annotated with entity, we have annotated with table. We have also generated the IDs automatically. So I think we are good here. I'm just going to use a default, I'm not going to use the default port because my default port is occupied already. So I'm just going to use 8082. If you're uh, using 8080, that should be fine as well. I'm just using 8082 because that is the free port available in my machine. I'll just trigger the run option i also have the postman client uh, let me open postman as well so i have the postman plugin installed in my chrome browser so i have just opened that so that we can directly use postman to do the post request so the program is getting okay it is using java 9 i will just stop it so that uh, my project is not using java 9 I'll use Java 8. I'll just do a clean and install. By default, I have uh, Java 9 set in my machine, so it is by default picking up the Java 9 every time I create a project. But uh, I don't want to use Java 9 because it is a EA edition. I want to upgrade it to the production version but I didn't find time to upgrade it to Java 9 because I'm not using a Java 9 in any project which I'm just showing you. Yeah, so the clean is successful that should be okay I'll just stop it and then meanwhile I'll run the project.
the Spring Boot application is up now on the port 8082. Let's do a get all. So the port number is uh, HTTP localhost colon 8082 slash rest slash user. So that is the rest endpoint which we were using. Since this is a get request, it should by default get give us the JSON and it should be empty. Yep. If you notice, it is by default empty. Now we are going to convert this into post and we need to say that we are going to pass the content of type json so we need to add this as a header so that the server side also acknowledges that this is a json message so the content type i'm just passing it as application slash json in the header and in the body i am just going to add the json message here the name of the uh, user uh, let's say it is peter and we need to pass the department for Peter. Uh, let's consider he is from the technology division. And the salary which he is getting. Let it be 12,000. That's it. We are not passing the ID here. The ID gets automatically generated. That is what we need to see here. Let's quickly hit the send button and then let's see the response. Yep. The response is received here with the ID. So the ID got generated and we have got the Peter generated in the database and the list of users have been retrieved back. Let's try creating a new user called Sam with different information. I'm just going to create Sam with operations department and his salary is 6000 bucks. You can notice that this is also getting created. Now let's do a get and then let's see what is the response. I'm just using a get, it should still return the same. Yep, if you notice here, it is returning the same. So let's go back to the code. So what did we do as a part of this particular video? So we have created a user resource. We created a post mapping which can produce the JSON message and which can consume a JSON message. We use the service. Inside the service, we have plugged it to the user repository, which is nothing but the JPA repository. We are using the Spring JPA Hibernate, and we are using the model called user model. And that particular model has the auto generated value as ID and that is the id and we have three other fields these are going to get persisted into the h2 database and they are all plugged in in this particular fashion from the user resource and we were using postman to show that as well so i hope you guys understood how to create a post mapping if you have any complex models you can still use a model and then you can have nested objects inside that it will still work if you follow this particular style, it should work for that as well. That's it for this particular video. I hope you guys understood how to do post mapping in the Spring MVC world. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.